Welcome to Precalculus, Section 5.2. Uh, if you're still a little confused on what the heck happened in Section 5.1, don't worry. This should clear up a lot of the confusion, if not all of it. Uh, let's see here. And very simple uh, bullet points. Only one thing to do. Verify trig identities. But first, let's talk about what are identities. So the book says, in this section, you're going to study techniques to verify trig identities. In the next section, we'll study techniques to solve trig equations. The key to both verifying the identities and solving the equations is your ability to use the fundamental identities in the rules of algebra to rewrite some trig expression. Remember that a conditional equation is an equation that is true for only some values in the domain of the variable. Like here, if I write sine of x equals 0, that's only true at values like a 0 and 1 pi and 2 pi and 3 pi as we go around the circle. So it's only, va uh, it's only true for certain values of x. Uh, when you're finding the values of the variable in which the equation is true, we are solving the equation for the answers that make it work. On the other hand, an equation that is true for all real values in the domain is an identity. Uh, for example, here is sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, but they moved the cos squared to the other side by subtracting it. This is always true no matter what you put in for x. Of course, you've got to put the same x value in here and here because it's the same variable. But you can plug in any number for x, and an identity is always going to be true. And then it says, although there are similarities, verifying that a trig, a trig equation is an identity is quite different from solving an equation. There is no well-defined set of rules to follow in verifying trigonometric identities. Uh, the process is best learned through practice. And there are multiple ways to verify identities. Every year, somebody brings up some new way that I've never thought of myself or saw before in class. Uh, there's always more than one way to do a lot of these. So they do give us some guidelines here. Uh, number one, work with one side of the equation at a time. I'm going to highlight that. I cannot stress that enough. Um, you know, if we have an identity and in the middle is an equal sign, we're not going to add sign to both sides, add sign to both sides. We're not going to divide both sides by some number or trig function. We're going to work on one side at a time. Um, and it says it's often better to work with the more complicated side to turn it into the simpler side of the equation. Uh, look for opportunities to factor an expression, add the fractions, square a binomial, or create a denominator that is single term, a monomial denominator. Number three, look for opportunities to use those fundamental identities. Note which functions are in the final expression that you want. Sines and cosines pair up nicely, as do secants and cosecants, and cosecants and cotans, because those are in the uh, Pythagorean identities together. Number four, when the preceding steps do not help, try converting everything into sines and cosines. That's my favorite technique. I usually try that first. Number five, always try something. Even if you make an attempt that leads to a dead end, it might pro provide some insight. Back up and try a different path. Uh, verifying trig identities is a useful process when you need to convert a trig expression into a form that is more useful algebraically. When you verify an identity, you cannot assume that the two sides of the equation are equal because you're trying to verify that they are equal. As a result, when you verify identities, you cannot use operations such as adding the same quantity to each side or cross-multiplying. Pick a side and stick with it. Okay, now again, just to compare this with the last section, if I make my marker white, this is what we would have seen in section 5.1, and the direction would be to simplify this. And you look at it and you go, it's a mess. I start doing some steps, but how do I know when I'm done? I made the analogy, you know, you're running a race and I don't tell you where the finish line is. So now here in 5.2, we have this expression, and there's the finish line. We know we're done when the left side is sine squared. So I am going to draw... Ooh, different color ink. You know, again, we are not going to mess with 
sine squared. We're not going to add or subtract anything over here or divide. We are going to stick with that left side until it matches the right side. Okay. Oops. Now one of the first things I notice about that left side uh, is the numerator. We got a squared term and a minus one in there. So I'm thinking Pythagorean. I'm going to do my scratch work over here in blue since we're not going to work on this side. And we've got our uh, Pythagorean is one plus tan squared equals secant squared. And we've got secant squared minus one. Well, that's easy. Let's subtract this one from both sides. So now we have tan squared equals secant squared minus one. So this numerator that I'm circling in blue is out secant squared minus one. That is now tan squared theta. And that's over secant squared theta. Okay, now we're going to use my favorite technique. Let's turn that into its forms of sines and cosines. Well, the numerator tangent is sine over cos, sine over cos, and since that is a tan squared, this will be a sine squared over a cos squared. And I'm going to switch ink because we've got, I'm going to put a double line here and we're going to put a denominator under there and we've got secant squared. Well, secant is one over cos, so secant squared will be one over cos squared, cos squared theta. So now I can give myself a little more room and move this up, Oop, get out of there. So we've got uh, the red fraction divided by this black fraction. How do we divide fractions? We flip and multiply. So this denominator is going to come up. Downstairs it's 1 over cos squared. Now it's going to be cos squared over 1. And this problem is developing nicely. So look what we got on that diagonal. We've got a sine or a cos squared on the diagonal. Those will cancel. So what are we left with? Sine squared. Sine squared theta equals what's on the other side of equals. What is our finish line? sine squared theta. So we manipulated the left side until it matched the right side. Excellent. And what's this remark? Uh, remember that an identity is only true for is only true for all real identities in the domain. For instance, in this example, it would not be true when theta is a half pi because our secant squared would be undefined. So it is true as long as that is uh, a member of the domain. Example two. Now on this one, the left side is more simple, so on this one we're going to work with the right side until it matches the left side. There's our finish line, 2 secant squared of alpha, or 2 secant squared of a little fishy thing. Sometimes I'll call it in class. So we are going to work on that right side. And on the right side we have a couple of fractions. Now one of the techniques was uh, look for the opportunity to combine fractions. So here we are going to combine those. And our common denominator are going to be these two multiplied together. So I could write it out down here, but let's foil it out right now and save ourselves the trouble. So we've got a 1 minus sine. Oh, no, hold on. Let, yeah, let's write it out. 1 minus sine alpha uh, quantity times 1 plus sine alpha. And now let's work on the numerator. So my first numerator is a 1. I'm highlighting in red. That 1 is going to be multiplied by 1 plus sine alpha. And then in between, we're adding the fraction. So we're going to add that. And now this other numerator I'm hitting here in blue, that 1 gets multiplied by the 1 minus sine alpha. 1 minus sine alpha. Okay, I'm going to sort of sneak down here. Uh, there's our dividing line in black. Our denominator, we're going to foil that out. And we're going to get 1 minus sine squared of alpha. And let's see here, we could distribute that one. There's technically a 1 out here to distribute. But what we're going to have is 1 plus sine alpha plus 1 minus sine alpha. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Again, it's always a good idea. If you're kind of getting a little stuck, look at our finish line over here. 2 secant squared of alpha. You know, sometimes we, if we look at the finish line, we might get a little more inspiration as to how to get there. So now, in the numerator, we will combine. We have a 1 and a 1. That's 2. 
Positive sine, negative sine cancel, so they're gone. 1 minus sine squared, well that's a Pythagorean identity, remember sine squared plus co squared equals 1. We've got a 1 minus sine squared, so that sine squared would jump over, leaving the cos squared. Oh, we're right, we can fall over the finish line now. Now sometimes it's hard to see. I'm going to drag that 2 off of the numerator. You know, I can pull the 2 out front here, but we do have to leave a placeholder, 1, above that. Now it might be easier to see. 1 over cos squared, well that's a reciprocal. 1 over cos is secant, so 1 over cos squared is secant squared, alpha. And that is our finish line. So we got there. Fantastic. Now, they have on here two numerical solution. You know, what we did was algebraic. We could have done that numerically on a table and seen that these were equivalent. You know, we'd open up our y editor and we could type in this for y sub 1, 2 secant squared of uh, alpha. And then for y sub 2, we could type in this mess. So we would have those in the y editor and then we could look in the table of values right here. We plug in negative 0.5, the outputs are the same negative 0.25 outputs are the same zero all the outputs are always the same because those functions are equivalent they are exactly the same but they just look a little different on the outside Ooh, and time for you to have a little practice fun on your own uh, so uh, pause the video and try these out and see if you can get them Okay, the first one, oh, now this is interesting. Okay, I'm just going to do uh, black ink for the division line, and I'll use red for the numerator. Up here we've got sine squared plus cos squared. Ooh, they just handed us that on a silver platter. That's one. And our finish line is one. Down in the denominator, we've got a cos squared and a secant squared. Well, we've got that technique to always try to put things into sines and coses, so this cos squared I'm going to leave it alone, but I'm going to put a 1 under it and make it look like a fraction. This secant squared, secant is 1 over cos, so secant squared is 1 over cos squared. And look at that, we're about at the finish line. So down in this denominator on the diagonal, those are going to cancel. So what we really have is a 1 in the numerator, and in our denominator it's 1 over 1 times 1 over 1. Well, that's all going to turn into a 1 over 1, which is 1. Identity verified. Now again, this is very similar to the last one we saw. So I'm sort of going to not do this quite step by step. So here we've got our denominators, 1 minus cos beta times 1, or in another it was 1 plus cos beta. When we FOIL those, we will get 1 minus cos squared beta. And this numerator one here, it gets multiplied by the one plus cos beta. And this one up here in red is going to get multiplied by the uh, one minus cos beta. One minus cos beta. And then we combine. Come down here. One plus one is two. The positive and negative cos is cancel. One minus cos squared, that is a Pythagorean away from sine squared. Oop, that's supposed to be a beta. I was going to do a theta. At least they rhyme. Oops. Now again, you know, the 2 on there, that does throw some students. If, you know, just imagine that 2 slips down, and there's a placeholder 1 there. So we've got 2, and then 1 over sine squared. Well, that's cosecant squared. And that is our finish line. Mission accomplished. Okay. Now this one... Uh, it says uh, one of our techniques was also to uh, FOIL if we had the opportunity. Here we've got a binomial, tan squared plus 1, times another binomial, cos squared minus 1. So let's see what we can do with this. Now each of the binomials, I'm going to underline the first one in red, tan squared plus 1. Well, if you look at your formula sheet, tan squared plus 1 is exactly the same as secant squared theta or secant squared x in this case. 
And then we have a cos squared minus 1. Now, I don't know if we've seen this yet. I'm going to come over here in, I'll switch to blue ink, and I'm going to do a little scratch work. We've got sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. Now, we want the cos squared to be positive and a minus 1. So here's our cos squared. It's positive on the left side. It's going to stay there. And the 1 is on the right, so we're going to bring that over and it's going to be subtracted. So now it's cos squared minus 1. What's going to be on the other side of equals? Well, this sine squared is going to jump over, but it's going to change to a minus sine squared. So what I underlined here in, whoop, that was supposed to be blue. Here, the cos squared minus 1 binomial, that is a negative sine squared x. Okay. Now look at our finish line. We got a tan here. And we've got a sine. Well, let's turn this into a form of cos. So secant squared is going to be 1 over cos squared. And we're going to multiply that by negative sine squared x. I'll put it over 1 so we can really see what's happening here. Now if I multiply straight across, numerator 1 times negative sine squared is negative sine squared x. Denominator, cos squared x times 1 is cos squared x. Now, if I sort of blocked this off, it, you know, leaving the negative out of there, sine squared over cos squared, well, that's going to turn into a tan squared. And the negative is attached. And that was our finish line. So we made it. Good job. Now, on, uh, we saw another example where we did an algebraic and then a numerical. Here's algebraic. We just did that to get there. We could verify this graphically. You know, what we could do is open up our TI-89's Y editor, and we could put this in as Y sub 1, and then we could put this in as Y sub 2, and then we could graph. You know, uh, we, the first one we put in would roll out first, so we'd see a graph appear on our screen. And then when it graphs the second one, it would just graph right on top of it. It'd be hard to even tell that it was going over it again. What we could do is toggle back and forth, graph one, and then turn that graph off, graph the other, and we would see that they are exactly the same. Uh, here's one for you to try. Very similar to what we just did. Notice here in our, our finish line, negative sine squared. So give that one a shot after you pause the video, and then we'll fire it back up and see if you got it right. Okay, uh, the first one, I'll underline in red, secant squared minus 1. Well, that's going to turn into tan squared. That's just a Pythagorean. And then we're going to multiply that. Sine squared minus 1 is going to be negative cos squared. Okay, let's turn everything into sines and coses. That's always a great strategy. So this tan squared is going to be a sine squared over a cos squared. And negative cos squared, we'll leave it alone. Put a 1 under it so it looks like a fraction. And then we'll see uh, the easy cancellation on the diagonal. When Now when we cancel, do not lose track of that negative. We need it in our final answer. So if we multiply across the top, we've got this negative times sine squared. That's negative sine squared. And our denominator is just a 1, so we won't even write it. And that was our finish line. Once again, we made it. Okay, that is the end of the video. Here is some even-numbered fun. Whoa, page 3,609. Okay, I paused my video and checked the book. That is page 360. The 9 should not be on there. So you're even-numbered fun, and uh, we'll do some odd problems in class. Uh, if you miss class, you can always check out these odd problems on Calc Chat. Uh, the red ones you can do in Calc View and watch the video. All right, I will see you in day two for this section.